Hello everyone. Welcome to this thought leadership series by Coronola Solutions. Today we have with us very eminent guest Mr. Jitendra Sardesai. Hello Jitendra. Hello Divya. So to give a brief uh, background of Jitendra, he is the MD and CEO of iSource Infosystems. Uh, Jitendra has over 30 years of industry experience and he is the key in leading Companies global footprints in the IT managed services and solutions market. So I'm very happy you could join us on the show, Jitin. Yes, thank you, Divya, for inviting me to your show. Yes. So, uh, Jitin, uh, from your uh, vast experience, uh, can you uh, help the users and our viewers understand how has the IT uh, infrastructure services market changed over the last decade? and also uh, what the recent pandemic has uh, uh, you know impacted this uh, sector well divya there's a good question and i could see that a good amount of change has happened over a decade uh, when it all started maybe long back with the mainframe management and uh, mini computers management getting into managing specifics of network devices so as various application so to say over a period now the gamut has increased even to the extent of managing end to end it infrastructure all sorts of devices all sorts of applications so the scope has definitely expanded over a decade and interestingly you, with the advent of various tools various technologies it has also enhanced the overall uptime management using these tools which could be even to the extent of uh, now ai ml based tools wherein they do a lot of predictive analysis and are able to assure the uptime of the various devices and applications to almost 99.99% so that's where we could see that uh, uh, earlier you used to have lot many teams involved in it now with this uh, uh, integration of various tools and the platform being available it has helped in assuring the customer the uptime and that's where i could see a big change coming in thanks to the new technologies and techniques and platform being available uh, during pandemic so to say in fact it has helped uh, the organizations like us where in their offering services to uh, more remotely and that's where earlier we could see some of the customer being more hesitant in uh, you know allowing uh, service providers like us to provide services remotely wherein earlier we used to have a lot of hybrid kind of a models in place of course they will be there today but uh, the ratio has changed and over a period customers have opened up and they allowed more remote services being offered and manage their infrastructure obviously the challenge was of security and various tools uh, and resources all put together but that's where the industry or the service providers like us have started solving this problem and i would see that this uh, hybrid uh, model will exist over a period and that's where a big change which has happened acceptance from the customer side it's not only the uh, enterprises but even mid size to smaller uh, customers also opening up uh, their boundaries and uh, with the advent of cloud helping us out from on prem to cloud and that's where the services are getting more and more uh, so to say efficiently offered and flexibly offered adaptability of your technologies is definitely uh, giving a good go ahead for these kind of service offerings wonderful uh, i think i totally agree with you ajitendra when you say that when we talk to uh, various vendors um, we come across that yes lot of new technologies lot of new tools are being embedded in the uh, solution now and now the whole approach is towards providing an end to end solution i would totally agree with you on that one so i'm happy to hear that yes uh, not only enterprise customers but also there is traction from smbs and smaller uh, organizations as well for the service and that's a, that's a brilliant thing to go so um uh, jitin uh, what according to you are the key major technology trends that it infrastructure market is facing 
Well, the cloud is the one which definitely is uh, fueling the overall change in the industry. Uh, various sizes of customers, uh, small customers are taking little time to adopt. But at the same time, startups are the ones who are immediately adopting the cloud kind of uh, technology. And that's where the change is very much to be seen. Uh, the enterprises, they have already adopted to cloud. They have hybrid uh, kind of systems in place. They are on public as well as uh, private cloud put together. So uh, that is one of the trend which definitely is uh, getting accelerated further. So from MSPs to CSPs is happening and um, that's what one change. Another one, obviously IoT is coming into picture and that is also coming into the ambit of managed services wherein we are able to, uh, using IoT, you are able to manage larger set of uh, devices, so to say. And uh, uh, the technology like AI, ML, wherein the AI obviously is making a lot of changes in the way we are uh, providing these services, the tools which are uh, using these technologies for predictive analysis and uh, in time uh, kind of decision uh, making for uh, various services to be offered. And uh, so I would say th th these kind of, uh, and apart from that, uh, the security related technologies as, as everybody is moving more uh, globally uh, of working remotely this uh, cyber security is going to play a major role in that. So uh, these are various, uh, apart from that big data and all those obviously are part and parcel of all these uh, lists of what one can say the trends which are coming up. But the solutions based on to these technologies uh, is the one which I could see from the service providers perspective are going to uh, help or you know uh, to offer our services. Wonderful, wonderful. So, uh, do you think, according to your, you know, your vast experience in the industry, what do you think are the challenges that, uh, you know, organizations in the IT infrastructure services market facing? And based on your expertise, what would you suggest them and advise them, you know, so that they can avoid those challenges and be successful? Good question. Now, if it is to be relevant more to uh, present situation. Obviously, uh, we have seen that smaller players, uh, very small players, they definitely had challenges of, uh, you know, offering things more flexibly because as the pandemic hit, obviously the uh, the services were to be provided remotely, and that's where the challenge lied for them. Another part was uh, so using uh, various. Uh, remote technologies, uh, having remote uh, enabled infrastructure, that was one challenge for them. The other one obviously is the resources part of it. So as uh, you have a central uh, place wherein not you are offering these services, uh, network operation center or a command center, now uh, you are not able to offer it uh, from there, especially in the pandemic. So you have to move and still continue offering it uh, from your various houses, the resources offering it from their houses. So, giving them all kind of secured access from there, and so it was a complete mindset change for acceptance from the customer side as well as uh, the processes which are sufficiently capable of dealing with this uh, remote uh, services from the individual place, and that was that is another challenge. So. Uh, all put together, I would say that uh, flexibility is very important. As we go ahead, the challenges lie in uh, effectively using the tools and technologies and the processes, which should be flexible enough. We should be able to quickly adopt to it and be able to compete with the players who are already established. So good part of it is the market has already expanded, wherein there is a need for such services anyway. It is expanding. and. Uh, so the competition is very much there. So the one who is able to put right kind of uh, uh, processes in place with the fully secured kind of uh, uh, confidence that you generate in the uh, customer's mind, uh, it will be more successful. So very interesting point you put here is that how um, you know one should you know uh, keep up with the new technologies as well as not lose out on the competition. So uh, let me just frame it uh, and ask you that as a business leader, how do you ensure that you are working with the latest technology as well as you are not also losing out on the global competition? <laughs> so I think uh, 
very very important that in order to ensure that uh, you stay afloat and grow as well as compete globally you have to have something like adoption of newer technologies without that you cannot survive time keeps on changing so other technologies so other requirements so you have to constantly be uh, aligned with the business requirements of your customer and then as it changes the newer technologies are the solutions which help you in optimizing the way you offer services and ensure an edge uh, against your competitors so constant innovation constant learning constant uh, research on the what is new technology coming up and how it is going to impact overall service market as well as the business will ensure that uh, you are dealing with the competition wonderfully put together uh, so um, as you have uh, mentioned uh, multiple times uh, you know uh, while speaking how security is important and you know going to be very you know going to play a very big role so uh, we all agree to that right data security is one thing which how much ever we talk about it it will still be relevant and still be you know uh, one of the key areas uh, for focus so uh, uh, my question is Jitendra what are some of the uh, you know changes that is happening in the security landscape and uh, are there any standards uh, you know uh, or guidance that users can look at refer that will help them in that direction yes security is obviously a main point when we uh, go more technical so no doubt uh, security standards are in my opinion they are already established to very large extent they are being used newer are getting framed as well as newer versions are coming up like uh, for example ISO 27001 or uh, now IT Act in India or uh, let's say uh, GDPR and all those all those are relevant uh, uh, you know standards which are there which are important for uh, all the service providers as well as from the customer side user side that we have to ensure that uh, the respective service provider is having certifications of those uh, and they're following those standards because that is very much important and uh, considering the kind of uh, cyber attacks uh, day by day increasing and with this kind of pandemic thing every everything is going uh, remote and global so that's where one has to ensure that they uh, the service product at their end, they ensure that they comply to such kind of uh, uh, frameworks which are already available in the market. And there are of course tools available, uh, security tools available at different different levels, logical security, physical security and various uh, parameter security, various uh, tools and devices are in place. A uh, good part of it is, as I said, the AI ML technologies or these kind of newer technologies are helping uh, the tools also go more intuitive, more uh, in a position to identify uh, the issues on the security side. And so one has to keep on checking out how well they, one can utilize that. There are tools which are like, for example, if I give you a specific example, in the SIM tool where, wherein it's able to uh, collect information from various, uh, uh, let's say, tools which are put into uh, within the infra, uh, within the organization or enterprise, collects all the logs identifies any kind of security related issue that has occurred and puts you in a dashboard mode. Now, based on that, people try and work out and figure out uh, uh, the solution to fix the uh, issue. With this technology, newer technology, they are able to even pinpoint the uh, whether exact issue is lying and able to close it also on your behalf or suggest you. So some tools can automatically close it. Uh, but some tools will provide uh, user interface or uh, your interference in order to close that. So uh, these tools are getting further intuitive and that is where the security landscape uh, will be uh, there wherein you will find more and more such tools coming in picture. But it's not only tool, it is important that the uh, team which is taking care of the security uh, part is also well trained and the processes are in place and ultimately the compliance to the respective land laws uh, from the security side is in place. 
wonderfully so i think there are a couple of pieces if i am able to uh, you know uh, take it right so there are tools there are processes yes. the people behind those tools and processes yes. and of course compliance all these That's organizations absolutely have right. to look for it yes. wonderful so uh, i think my last question for you for this session is uh, uh, you know being um, an entrepreneur and leader yourself so um what would be some of your advices you would like to give to uh, the next generation entrepreneurs so that uh, they can be uh, relevant competitive and sustainable in the dynamic changing environment interesting question uh, as an entrepreneur i look at it see success is not uh, any destination as everybody says obviously it is a constant journey you, uh, one has to go through uh, multiple successes and failures uh, but one has to be constantly working on the concept that is working on he has to have a lot of patience and uh, in the initial period if you get uh, failures uh, be happy with that so that uh, testing failures after success is a bad thing is good to have failures first and then success however it is always a chain more importantly i would say the patience is the uh, name of the game and uh, with the changing times obviously uh, now we see that uh, uh, at least i've seen across uh, the new generation at times quickly trying to figure it out and uh, always see the examples uh, of unicorns and that's where we want a quick success the fact remains is not necessarily that everybody will get that kind of a quick success so be patient uh, be confident Uh, technically uh, constantly innovate and try to be aligned with the uh, business requirements and that's it uh, keep on uh, doing a lot of uh, analysis uh, that is important because learn from the mistakes and also not necessarily that you have to always have a uh, you know failures in order to learn something so smart learning is important uh keep on reading good things keep on talking to the uh, people who have been successful as well as the people who have failed in the industry so uh, try and get insight and that's how it is i am sure uh, as an entrepreneur you will figure it out so it's uh, actually speaking it's an individual journey as an entrepreneur it's not necessarily that it has to be uh, the same for others it's an individualistic event and that's how it is that's what the life is all about as an entrepreneur wonderful do you think i think that's very well said so uh one thing is it's an individual journey and the other thing is uh patience and knowledge so a yes. uh, learning is the key i think you have to learn at every step and uh, you know uh learn from your mistakes learn from others mistakes just keep learning and that will keep you going in this journey absolutely very well said jitendra so i am very uh, glad that you could join us uh, today and uh, share the pearls of wisdom i'm very sure that uh, our viewers would definitely relish the uh, knowledge you shared it was really an insightful session and having a pleasure thank you very much divya for this uh, been wonderful session uh, i liked it Thank, Thank you. you so much. Jitendra. So all the best to you and to your viewers. Thank you so much, Jitendra. So uh, uh, that's it for our session. And do subscribe to our channel if you want to hear and look at more such insightful videos. We do keep um, uh, talking to all the business uh, leaders, technology leaders, and help get their insights on lot of current topics. Have a good day.